Shalom Chavarim. Uh, we are coming back on this broadcast real quick here. There, there are conflicting reports as to what is happening in Damascus there. Uh, we have, uh, RT is reporting explosion heard at Damascus Air Base. Uh, his air base ammo depot reports at least one powerful explosion has rocked a military airport in Damascus hitting an ammunition depot there, which does seem to suggest that it has been targeted. But then I come across another clip here uh, from News Executive that says that Syrian state media are now rejecting reports accusing an Israeli airstrike as the re reason for the huge explosion at its Syria's air base, says the blast caused by electrical short circuit. Now, that seems to play a little bit odd, though, because uh, unless someone is using a different types of footages there, let me just back up here. Uh, in some of the footage that we are seeing, it appears more to be uh, a military strike there, but it could be something different altogether there. So if we go to the latest here and just pull up, what do we have? Syrian air defense repels air. See, here we go right here. Now, Sputnik is saying that the Syrian air defenses are repelling um, airstrike. Let's just see what we have. Syrian air defenses, this is September 1st, by the way, 2018, repels airstrike on Damascus suburb. Our reports are coming out. Repeated blasts were heard from the direction of Syria's Ma uh, Mazi military air base near Damascus on Sunday, Reuters reported. According to the source in Syria intelligence services, the unannounced airstrike hit an ammunition <clears throat> storage facility at Mazi military air base. However, the uh, uh, military airfield was not affected. All right, that's what I was talking about right there. If you look at that photo right there, it definitely looks like we're dealing with an airstrike uh, versus this other uh, comment there that it was caused by an electrical explosion there. I wanted to quickly update this because I was not, I, I, you know, we just, we don't want to be misleading, period. You're dealing with a very serious issue. We're talking about um, when you're dealing with Damascus and Damascus being under attack, whether it's... Uh, uh, Israel trying to take out Iranian targets, if it's the U.S. Uh, trying, to, trying to weaken their abilities uh, in their strike on Idlib, uh, it, it's just, you, you can't really say. It says the Times of Israel newspaper reported citing sources that the strikes had been conducted by, the Israeli, by Israeli aircraft. That's the Times of Israel is making that report already. So it's important that we're as accurate as we possibly can. And this is, even though we're trying to get this out to you guys as rapidly as I possibly can, um, we also want to be as accurate as we possibly can as well. Uh, so let's just look to see what some of the latest things are coming out. Um, and that's actually, I believe, our own article there, Explosion in Syrian Air Base near Damascus. Uh, I actually pulled that one down so we could reload this here because I wanted to make sure we bring a balance in the reporting here. So no, it's not YouTube removing this. Uh, that was me, myself, removing this here. So uh, we're watching very closely to see what is going on uh, and to try to get an idea of what's happening there in the Middle East there. It's a troubling situation, friends, and uh, it is going, it's all over mainstream media moving very rapidly. At least five explosions have been heard in the Syrian capital. The blast in the early morning hours of Sunday uh, have shook um, the Syrian capital after midnight. That's according to the Associated Press there. They're bringing that part out there. Uh, it says Lebanese al Mayadeen TV station with which is close to the Syrian government, reports that the blast came from the direction of the Mizah military uh, airport southwest of the capital. Locals report on the social media seeing fires and hearing explosions from that direction. Syria's government has accused Israel of carrying out a number of, air, uh, of strikes on the Mazi airport in the past. Israel rarely admits to strikes inside Syria but says it will use military action to prevent weapons transfers in the enemies, uh, uh, to its enemies inside of Syria. So we have to kind of wait. We know that uh, I shared with you guys the other day just some of the intelligence that we were getting off the ground in, in Israel is that something major was about to happen. And of course, we looked at this at Iranian targets inside of Syria 
uh, being targeted. And that's exactly what we're anticipating to see, that Israel would do this. Kind of throws the Syrian government off balance, especially with this strike on Idlib, because the Syrian government is getting ready to take back uh, one of the last pieces of land, the stronghold of terrorists there. And suddenly now Israel starts striking all around Damascus and it will cause the uh, Syrian army to have to totally rethink what they are doing and whether or not they're going to have to defend Damascus and pull off the attack on Idlib. Uh, but, you know, this is a situation, friends, that can spiral out of control so rapidly it's not even funny. Russia has a massive fleet of ships in the Mediterranean, even talking about doing military drills in the Mediterranean. The Turkish government has moved uh, armaments into Idlib. Uh, they have their own convoys headed there as Syria has its own convoys headed up there to retake Idlib. And it's odd that the United States, like Mike Pompeo, would be out there screaming that uh, it's wrong for Russia to help Syria to take back Idlib. You know, this is like saying that the United States, if we were overtaken by terrorists in the United States, and that we have to leave one state out and let the terrorists have that state. No one in this country would ever do it. Why? Because we would have innocent civilians living in that state as well. Or do we just allow the, te uh, like for example, we're going to give Texas over to the terrorists, you know, because they decide they take over our nation, but we defeat them all except Texas and leave Texas all by itself. No, we're going to fight to take Texas back. And that's just the way it is. And to say that the Syrian government doesn't have a right to liberate every last stronghold of these terrorists because their civilians are living in tyranny uh, by these terrorists. You know, contrary to what the U.S. Uh, may say, the State Department, Mike Pompeo, or any of the rest of these uh, guys over there, this is just a shame on America uh, you know, I was just watching a video of Turkish militants in Afrin uh, threatening, or, or they said they're going to execute the man tomorrow, um, a farmer, for heaven's sake. So what do you think they're going to be doing to all these people living inside of uh, Idlib? Do you think they're living in peace? No, they're living in coercion, you know, unless they go along with the state-sponsored terrorist. So, yes, Damascus is definitely under attack from what we can see. And, uh, you know, there, you know, it could be an electrical fire issue. If that's what the one uh, man that reported there, that could be the case. Uh, but, you know, from what we're seeing right now, different reports that are coming in is that uh, the, the military air base, uh, the Syrian military air, air base has been struck by missiles from what the early reports are saying right now. Syrian air defense has repelled missile attack at the air base near Damascus. That's coming in from TASS news agency there. Syria accuses Israel of missile strike on the military base in Damascus one minute ago on the Jerusalem Post. So it definitely looks like we have a very serious situation on our hand, hands there in Syria. What will happen next? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov in a world of Ain Shalom. Good evening. There is no peace.